Welcome to Simon Scott Assembly Hall for the first and second round games of the NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Championship. Congratulations, Indiana, on advancing to the championship field and best of luck during your stay in the bracket. As a reminder, the open locker room portion for Indiana will run simultaneously with today's press conference from 1045 to 1115 a.m. Currently, we're joined on the dais by junior Chloe Moore McNeil and junior Sydney Parrish. We will go to Zoom first for the questions. We'll start with Talia Minsberg. Mm-hmm. Yes. Awesome. I swear, I'm learning how to unmute during <laughs> the pandemic. Um, thank you guys so much. It's, it's great to talk to you. I am ready to story about your, your wonderful coach and your dad, Vic. So I am wondering if you guys can share a bit about what it's like having Terry's family around at practices and at games, and especially if you could speak to what your relationship has been like with Vic these past few years. Yeah, I was going to say, um, over the years, I think the relationship with, you know, Coach Moore and, and her father, you know, has brought joy to the entire team, you know, seeing him always brightens our day. Um, being here for only the last year now, um, I've just really noticed the connection that Coach Moore has with her family and with her, specifically her father, and um, <laughs> just the joy it brings to her and kind of just our entire program when she gets to see her dad after the games and always takes time to – uh, make sure her sister and her family are all doing okay after, and it really just kind of shows um, what kind of coach she is and how personable she is to uh, her family, and she wants to grow this program to be a family-like environment as well. Talia, do you have one more? Uh, you guys hear me again? Yes, go ahead. Uh, no, I'm great. I'll be here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, we will now take questions from inside the room. Raise your hand, and we will get you a microphone. Uh, this is for Sydney, Lou Friedman from the Seymour Tribune. Um, this season feels like it's been going on for a while. Are you glad to finally be here with this as a goal that you had so many months ago? Yeah, um, it's been a big goal of ours for, you know, since last June when everyone – kind of decided to come on campus and start working out. Um, it's been a long time coming, but uh, we've grown from the moment all of us transfers and freshmen stepped on campus, and uh, we got the respect from the girls that were on the team last year, and it's just been a really great year of, you know, building chemistry on and off the court, and it's just kind of translated on the court, and it's been a really fun year so far, and we're ready to wrap it up with a good march. Hi, Mike Merritt from Associated Press. Um, I have a question for each of you. Chloe, I, I, I want you to talk a little bit about um, the what the three-point shooting has done, what it's changed about this offense. I think Lisa Bluter talked a little bit about that's a big difference this year. And for Sydney, you came here from a pack from, from the West Coast. I'm curious what you've seen, how you've seen the Big Ten evolve and and what they've become this year. Chloe, why don't you start first? Yeah. Um, so we've brought in a great freshman class and some awesome transfers. And, you know, last year I feel like we had a great defensive-minded team, and we have that this year as well. But I think the difference in last year and this year is the three-point people that we've brought in to this program have taken us to an entire different level. So I'm really grateful to be a part of that. Um, yeah, coming from the Pac-12 and uh, a different kind of style of play out there and then coming to the Big Ten, it's a big difference, but I think it kind of showed, opened my eyes to see other another conference and how it's played. And I mean, the Big Ten's the best, I personally think the best team, the best conference in the, the nation. And it's just crazy to see from top to bottom um, the talent level um, through each, you know, each team. And it's just been really fun to play in the Big Ten and um, I'm excited to see not just us, but the other Big Ten teams compete in the in the tournament this year. Hey, Chloe, I was I, I was kind of curious the um, opportunity you get every game to play or, or try to defend the toughest offensive player. How how much do you embrace that? Do you ever think like 
let Sydney try it this time or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she thinks that. <laughs> I mean, how, how do you embrace that challenge, you know, game after game? Yeah, it's, it's for sure um, a challenge guarding such different, dynamic, great players. You know, I respect all of them. But like you said, I really embrace that role because it's such fun to just, you know, be able to take on that role and say, hey, I get to try to, you know, guard the best players in the country. So. Uh, this is for both of you, uh, you know, with Sydney coming in this year and Chloe having been here before, just you guys have spent most of the season as one of the best teams in the country. How have you managed to kind of, how have you managed those expectations and kind of being in the spotlight that whole year and staying so consistent through, you know, having that, those expectations on you? Sydney, why don't you take that one first? Yeah, um, I kind of, I'd say this week really, when we haven't played in like over a week now, and I've spent this time really reflecting on the year, and I think it's, kind of been crazy. You know, we see these WNBA players and these famous celebrities coming out with their brackets and some of them you see us going to the final four, the championship game. And I'm just like sitting there like, wow, like this is reality, you know? And I think that because throughout the season, we just kind of, our motto was always one game at a time, one game at a time. And now looking back, it's like, we've only lost three games this year, only by under like, I think it's 10 points total. And um, just to know that we, have that spotlight on us right now and that we have the potential to make a run in this tournament is um, very exciting. And I think that um, we still just need to take it one game at a time because it's six games. So one game at a time and we can make a run. Yeah, I definitely um, agree with Sid, you know, seeing all these famous people like Obama having <laughs> us as his, you know, final game is actually incredibly crazy. But at the same time, I think, you know, keeping all of the outside noise to a minimum is what, you know, has helped us be so successful because it is March Madness and anything can happen. So we do have to take it one game at a time. Just a reminder, please state your name and affiliation when asking a question. Amanda Foster inside the hall for either or both of you. Just I'm curious what the mood is like in the locker room since you have some players like Chloe, you've obviously been in this situation before. Sydney transfers and freshmen like yourself have not been been here, especially with Indiana. So what's, what's the mood like between all of the players and all of you together? Chloe, why don't you start? Um, it's funny that you say that. We were just listening to music, um, danced around with each other not too long ago. But um, the chemistry and I feel like the energy already is, you know, where it needs to be in a term of being prepared and ready for our opponent. Yeah, we're really excited. Um to start playing games again. I mean, like you said, like it's been a long week, long almost week and a half since we've played. So I think we're just ready to get back on the floor. We've had a great uh, week and a half of practicing and just being getting prepared. So I think that we're, we're really ready to play. Anything else in the room? Addie Miners. Uh, from WLKY out of Louisville. Um, you kind of talked about it a little bit, but talk a little bit more just about the balance that you guys, that this team really has. You know, obviously you have Grace who and, and McKenzie who are both, you know, big name, but like your whole team really contributes and you guys have all really stepped up this season. So talk about how that balance is really, you know, hopefully going to be one of your keys to success. And maybe if you see another key to success, what is that? Sydney, why don't you start? Yeah, um, I mean, obviously we have Mackenzie and Grace who are All-American status. They're the best players in the country. Um, but we have scoring also coming from other players um, really equally. We have equal opportunities on the court. And I think it really starts on the defensive end. Like, sometimes you look at our team and it's like we aren't the most athletic, fast, you know, going to jump the highest. But we work really hard in the defensive end. And I think it really starts with Chloe and how she's – literally playing the best players in the country every single night and defending them and stopping them. And I think it roots from her and just kind of we bounce off of her and try and help her in those gaps and, you know, trying to get deflections. And then it starts also on the uh, defensive rebounding side and just pushing the ball. Yeah, like you said, um, I feel like everybody contributes balanced in a way, but everybody contributes something different every given night, you know. And I feel like we, I'm, I'm on the floor with – great players at all times. You can't really focus in on one person because you have the Sydney Parishes and the McKenzie Holmes, Grace Burgers, you know, everybody. So We have time for two more. 
This will be for, for both of you. The, uh, the ability to go deep into the determinant a lot of times depends on the quality of the backcourt, and it seems like you guys have a very strong backcourt. Can you both address that? Chloe, why don't you start? I mean, yeah, we do have a great backcourt and frontcourt as well. So, we, I mean, we're just looking to making a tournament run. So, um, I think it definitely helps with our size in the backcourt. Um, I mean, we start really tall players, and I think that that's going to help us make a run through the tournament and mostly just staying out of foul trouble. Um, I think will definitely help us make a run as well. Anything else for the student athletes? If not, ladies, thank you. You may return to the locker room for the remainder of the open locker room period. Thank you. Thank you.
We are now joined by Indiana head coach Terry Morin. Coach, welcome to March Madness. Oh, thank you. If you could make an opening statement, then we'll go straight to questions. Um, well, good morning. Uh, it's the best time of the year um, for all of us that uh, love this game so much. And um, it's been a uh, long uh, 10 or 11 days for us after the Big Ten tournament. Um, but it's been a good 10 or 11 days for us just to kind of catch our breath. Um, get some rest both mentally and physically. But, um, you know, we are beyond excited to, um, you know, get out there today, but, um, you know, even more so for uh, the 11.30 tip, tip time tomorrow against a really good uh, Tennessee Tech team that uh, played extremely well last night. And Kim and her uh, um, staff are doing a great job. And so it was fun to watch uh, both teams, Monmouth and uh, Tennessee Tech, uh, compete last night. Thanks, Coach. We will start on Zoom. Rachel will take two questions. Great. Uh, uh, hi, Coach. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Good morning. Great. Good morning. Rachel Watson of the Wall Street Journal. Um, Coach, you got to Indiana not long after Cook Hall opened and their facilities upgrades since then to Assembly Hall. And of course, your locker room there was the donation from Sandy and Nagi. How much did those upgrades, you know, which really seemed to put the women's program on, on equal footing with the men, Well, you know, we just, this is the first year, uh, f first season that we've been in our new um, locker room. And so, uh, you know, it's been something that we've uh, wanted for, for some time. And it, you know, it just so happened that uh, Sandy Eskenazi stepped up uh, amongst others, uh, donors, and, um, you know, wanted to provide us with uh, a space for our players. Uh, we, you know, during the game, uh, and uh, also from a recruiting standpoint, you know, when um, you know we are um, recruiting against some of the best, uh, you know, teams in the country, uh, facilities do matter, and um, you know, it's a space where our kids obviously are. We're very proud of it, uh, and uh, you know, it doesn't happen without the help of a lot of people, um, including our people here at Indiana that have to track down those that want to support women's basketball. Um, in, a, in this kind of a way. So, um, you know, we're extremely um, pleased with how it turned out. And, um, you know, we're very fortunate and also blessed uh, with the space that we do have. Rachel, do you have one more? Yeah, no doubt. Uh, when the Cook family, uh, when they decided, and this was long before I was here, uh, you know, in Indiana, decided to build Cook Hall, uh, you're exactly right. Uh, they wanted to make it identical in terms of the space. So what the, the, the suite looks like on the men's side mirrors what we have on our side. Uh, we don't share a, a practice facility court, per se. We, uh, you know, we have our own. Uh, the men have their own. But, you know, certainly... Um, you know, when you work as closely as we do with our men's uh, staff, uh, you know, you learn to share uh, that facility because it's so great and it's utilized by uh, both programs. Um, but, um, you know, when we arrived here nine years ago, one of the goals was, um, you know, I grew up in southern Indiana, so I understand the tradition that's always been on the men's side because uh, I grew up watching it. Uh, but, uh, you know, one of our first, um, you know, goals that uh, we had for this program was, uh, yes, there's tradition on the men's side, but we really felt confident that we could build the tradition on the women's side as well. Um, and so our hope now is that when people speak of uh, Indiana basketball, it's, it's no longer exclusive just to men's basketball. And they're talking about, um, you know, yes, men's basketball is, uh, you know, they have the ban banners, but uh, there's also a women's basketball team uh, that is, is quite talented and skilled uh, and has had, you know, has been able to sustain success over the last four to five years. Um, and so, you know, I don't really get caught up in the comparables of the, the two. I think uh, when you're at an institution like Indiana, you know, you have to be a fan for all your sports, whether it's football, whether it's men's basketball, because let's let's be honest, I mean, you know, as if, if they do well, 
the in the institution, all the athletic department, you know, does well, and so I keep that in perspective as as uh, much as I can. But uh, you know, we just we just try to do what we do, and and we're a part of a great athletic department here, um, and. Um, you know, we're, we're cer certainly proud of what we've been able to accomplish, but, uh, you know, we want our own banner. We want a banner that hangs up in Simon Scott Assembly Hall that's uh, just for women's basketball. We'll move to questions from the room. Just a reminder, raise your hand, we'll get you a mic. Please state your name and affiliation. Hi, Terry. Hi. Mike Merritt from Associated Press. Um, I'm curious, I've got two questions I'll ask. The, I'll, I'll, I'll put a pause in between them. The first one is you mentioned that <clears throat> I believe you've only played three games since February 19th. I'm curious as for, as from a coaching standpoint, what do you do to try and prevent the team from getting stale over that point? I don't even know if you've ever been through that kind of a stretch. Well, I think one of the things that happens is, you know, yes, the three games, but, uh, you know, two of them have been losses for us. So it's, it's given us great motivation to get back in practice uh, and certainly figure out some of those things that, uh, you know, we, we didn't do well enough, uh, why, we, why we lost the game. And, uh, you know, you try to shore up all of those things. But uh, also, it's been a great time for us to rest. You know, the Big Ten has been incredible this season, um, top to bottom. You know, we, we had doubles with everybody that's in the field uh, this year, this particular year. Uh, and so we had an incredibly difficult conference season. Um, and so it's, it's been, um, you know, I, I don't know if it's a silver lining, but I think it's been good for us to be able to have some extra time off um, because of the, the, the schedule we've played. Um, but, uh, you know, you get inside of practice, there's plenty of things, trust me, that we can, uh, you know, there's no ceiling for this team uh, that we can improve on. And, and we've tried to, to do, you know, pick something, whether it's two or three things, two or three things uh, every day that are different, right? We're not doing the same thing uh, in practice. Um, and we also have a tremendous you know, practice squad that's super competitive. This is the best pr practice squad, squad we've had. Um, so they've made it uh, not just entertaining, but also very competitive for our kids in practice. Second question is about, you've been, you've been around this program now for a while. You've watched the Big Ten. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that the Big Ten took the jump that it did this year? Well, I think, you know, again, um, as much as we hated COVID, you know, it did give us an extra year for some of these top talented kids, um, including us, you know, Grace Berger, obviously being able to come back and, uh, you know, have a, her COVID year. Uh, and I, I think you see that on almost all of the Big Ten, you know, teams, uh, whether, you know, they were seniors, but they got that extra year, so they came back. Um, look, this is a, a conference that is so talented, not only in players, but, um, you know, in the coaches and their coaching staffs. It's, it's been incredible and um, really fortunate and appreciate that the opportunity to be a part of it. Um, but um, you know, I, I, I attribute it that, to that, the COVID, but I, it, there's just talent. There is talent in this league. Um, and, um, you know, we're going to see some of these kids, uh, I'm hoping, including Grace Berger, you know, that's going to be, be playing at the next level this summer. Um, and, um, in representing, you know, this this league, and so um, you know, it's it's been a grueling Big Ten season for us. But I, I would I would suspect this that we can all sit up here as head coaches and um, and unequivocally say that the Big Ten season has prepared us for March, you know, because of how difficult it's been. How are you doing, Coach? Good. Uh, Kevin Vera, the Hoosier Network. Um, I know you just found out last night, but Tennessee Tech, they're winners of eight straight. Mm -hmm. They're coming off an of OVC tournament championship. Yeah. Um, they're playing arguably their best basketball. Right. How do you coach a team that's kind of just going into March with, again, just some of their best basketball? Well, you know, it's we don't you don't try to be or do anything different than, you know, what we've done. Uh, you know, our recipe still has remained the same in terms of our practice, our preparation. Um, you know, the one thing that um, – you know, has been different. We've we've never been in this scenario where you know um, you're you're watching a play-in game and now you only have really one day to prep. You know, um, but um, we we have you know all week have been you know spread spreading out 
you know, workloads from our staff in terms of covering all the, the teams we're playing. And so, um, you know, again, our kids weren't here last night, but they were watching on TV. Our staff was certainly here. Um, but uh, you, you're absolutely right. I mean, this is a hot team right now. It's, uh, they're not to be taken lightly. Uh, in, in my opinion, seeds are thrown out at this time of year. It just, you know, you just look around, watch TV, and uh, you, you find out quickly whether you're watching men's basketball or women's basketball today when it starts that seeds don't matter at this time of the year. Um, it's, it's you want your team's uh, team, like you just mentioned, to be playing their best basketball. And it's, um, it's um, obvious that Tennessee Tech right now is playing their best basketball. Terry, hey, Pete DiPremio, IU Athletics. Uh, question on, on Chloe, and I know you've talked about her before, but the fact that she, she guards the toughest player for the opposing team each game, mm -hmm. when did you notice that first ability? Like, as a freshman, you decide she's the one to go and handle that. Oh, I think, Pete, we just have watched her. Um just, you know, just get a little bit better every year. You know, as a freshman, she came in, gosh, probably she weighed maybe a, a buck 15, you know, and then you put her in, you know, a program with Kevin, our strength and conditioning coach, who is phenomenal, and you just watch her, her body start to develop, and then, you know, you watch her in practice, uh, compete, um, and that's the thing with, with Chloe. I mean, she just has this tough toughness factor uh, that doesn't show up always in the stat sheet. It's, you just know how competitive she is. You watch her in practice. Um, I do think it's something that um, she is really embraced. Um, you know, this is a team that always is looking for what each of them individually can do to help the team. Uh, and, uh, you know, Chloe understands uh, that what we need her to do is be a great, great defender for us. Um, and I think she's, she's, she's taken on that challenge, but she's also embraced it. Uh, and has really thrived, you know, in being able to do that for us. But, um, you know, I would say it's, it's a combination of Certainly when we brought her here, uh, that's one of the reasons why we recruited her. We liked her length. We liked her, um, you know, her athleticism. But um, you, you have to do the work, and you gotta, you know, you got to want, want to take on the role uh, that your coaches give you. And, um, you know, she is, um, you know, she's done so much for us this season um, because, by the way, yeah, she has to guard the best – offensive players, you know, uh, perimeter player, but then she has to turn around and come on the other end and run our basketball team. And when Grace Berger was out, that was something that was new to her and different. Um, and so we've just watched her transform into, um, you know, such a steady um, but dependable. Gosh, she's, so, she's such a dependable player, you know, to have on our team. Coach, good morning. Mason Williams morning. with thehoosier.com. Uh, I'm curious now that you guys have not been shy about saying that a national championship is a real possibility for you guys, something you guys have had eyes for this year. Now that you're in this tournament, you mentioned not being able to take a team lightly. How do you kind of keep a tunnel vision on your girls to make sure that you can't look past anybody? Well, again, it's just it's continuous conversation that you have with them. Um, and look, you know, these guys aren't we, – we're old. We're a veteran team. We're an experienced team. Uh, they realize that um, – you know, this is a different kind of tournament. You're, if you lose, you're done. Your season's over. And um, if, if that doesn't give you a sense of urgency, <laughs> I don't know what does, right? And so uh, we don't try to magnify it because I don't want them. I want them playing with joy and freedom and fun. Um, you know, so you, you try to take the pressure off of them and just remind them, let's just, let's just you know, go out and be who we've been all year and um, do what we've, we've been able to do all year with, um, with, with, without the pressure because that's the last thing. Uh, the very last thing that I want these guys thinking about. I want them going out and playing with, with total freedom and uh, enjoy uh, come tomorrow. Seth Tao with the Daily Hoosier. Um, you guys have spent most of the season as one of the top teams in the country. I guess, how have you managed those expectations? You know, it's one thing to say things like you never arrived, but how do you get them to believe it and buy into that for three or four months? You just remind them of who we are. You know, we're, we're still the, um, the blue collar team, the, um, you know, uh, program that uh, has, has continued to, to seek and search for, you know, respect. Um, but, um, you know, the, the reason why we're here is because of what we've been able to do that nobody sees. 
right? And that's that's the work. Uh, that's also the sacrifices that this group has had to make as individuals. Um, you know, we asked them to do that at the beginning of the year because we knew that, um, you know, the, 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 the new guys that we brought in were all starters at their other institutions. And, and so the, this idea of being able to gel and the chemistry and all that coming together uh, takes a sacrifice from all those, those kids. You got you to gotta leave your ego at the door. And, um, you know, all of us have to do what's best for the, the team. And that could be coming off the bench. That could be playing 30 minutes. It could be playing four minutes. Um, but uh, it's, it's a constant reminder of, um, you know, the, the grittiness and the toughness and the blue collar attitude um, that uh, we've always tried to, to uh, remind them that we play with. Um, you know, that's, that's been who we've, we've been since we've been here. And I don't think that, that winning should change that. Great. Thank you for your time, Coach. Yep, you guys are welcome. Best of luck. Thank you. Just a reminder to the media, Indiana's practice will begin at 1130 a.m.